This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. I love that. I have more fun doing that and singing along. <laughs> Excuse the cough. I have a cold tonight. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll <clears throat> we'll try and survive it this evening. Uh, but mean whilst, uh, we're going to start off before going to the citizens panel by attempting a phone call to a dear friend of ours. Let me see here. Okay, everybody. Now, you know we do this uh, with Stephen Pearl. And the reason we do it with Stephen Pearl is because when we call him, he always has some kind of way of answering the phone that is different and unusual. Okay? So let's see if he does it this time. Let me just call him. Let me see here. Here we go. We're calling out to California. There we are. He'll, he'll answer any second now. Or will he? Let me see here. There, there he is. Hey, Al Franken wants to know if there's any good open mics tonight. <laughs> <laughs> punctual, baby. we got to be on it every second. Yeah, punctual. Yeah, well, this may not run for a week, but that's still a good joke any way you put it. That's a good joke. It it's, it it's probably won't start to smell for eight or nine days. So <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. we're probably in the, in the margin of safety right now. <laughs> give, give me the due date on it. Put it on the... You know, on the on the card. <laughs> I think yeah, I think it goes bad on the fifteenth. Good until December fifteenth, two thousand seventeen. How, how about that with Al Franken? No, you know. Well, I I, I thought he would I, see if I were him. Well, what do I know? But if I were if I were in his shoes, I would have said yes. When uh, the predator in chief in the Oval Office and the guy in Alabama step down, then I'll step down. How about that? Yeah. Until then. I got a six gun in each hand, motherfucker. I'm coming out blazing. Come and get me. <laughs> yeah, we're recording this on the day that Al Franken quit. We're probably playing it a week later. We may, I may run it faster than that just to keep it good and fresh. Uh, but, well, I don't want to say when this was recorded, but I sure hope they find that Lindbergh baby. He was a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe his father gave Hitler a rim job, but that's besides the point. So we call these guys at their convenience. Uh, not live or, or whatever. But you know, I you know what I would have done if I were if I were Franken, what I would have done was look, they're forcing me from office. Okay, uh-huh. so why don't I just say fuck all y'all? I'm not leaving. He didn't have to leave. He doesn't have to leave. No, you I, know. Would, I would stick it and, out. And, and all these worse than me. So here I stay. So. All all the I was really surprised at the people that came out against him. Like, I've always been a fan of Kirsten Gillibrand, and all of a sudden uh-huh. I come to find she's a cunt, you know? Yep. I mean, surprise. surprise, surprise. And then, of course, surprise, Chuck, surprise. Chuck, Golly. Chuck Schumer didn't surprise me because Chuck yeah. Schumer is the biggest political opportunist anywhere. Uh, I used to have sure. a saying on my radio show when I was on Sirius that if it's Sunday, it must be Chuck Schumer. Because what he would always do <laughs> is he would always hold a press conference on Sunday, which was not his Sabbath, okay, uh-huh. because he knew it yeah. was a dead news day and it would always get on. Yeah. So he could yeah. always count on Sunday the, 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 the news going, and Chuck Schumer today said blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, oh, uh, he's a crafty bastard. He's a crafty one. Yeah, so I, I expected that out of him, politi- political expediency, all right? Yeah. But here's the one I don't get. Al, uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh huh. Now, why did he ask him to leave? Why he didn't want? He didn't like showing up at the Senate with wearing the same dress. I mean, (laughs) that way in 2020 I can run again, even though I'll be 148 years old. There's always hope. I I wrote him a note saying, "Shame on you." And I realized that writing, I wrote a note to Gillibrand to Schumer. I've never written to a congressman in my life. To uh, Gillibrand, Schumer, and and to Bernie, and uh, uh-huh. the one to, to both uh, Gillibrand and and Schumer were fairly similar. I just changed uh-huh. a couple of lines in it, 
and yeah. the one to Bernie was different. I said, you know, you're a socialist, and you should like a guy like like uh, he should be a comrade in arms because he's the closest yeah. he's the closest thing to you that we've got in the Senate. You know, yeah, and, yeah. And, um, and I said, shame on you. You know, I said you've just betrayed everything you believe. Uh, and well, I know I wrote these letters, and my friend Shecky, I called him. I said I wrote these letters, and he went, "Well, you know, they're not going to do any good." And I said, "Of course, they're not going to do any good. They're probably not even going to read them." I said, yeah. "But it makes me feel good." Exactly, you did something. You did your part. Right? You know, uh, I just think it was just a complete pile on, and and uh, yeah. it it uh, you know they were, like, they were like a pack of little democratic wolves, you know, eating, oh, yeah. eating their own, right? Yeah, they, real, yeah, they realize that one of their one of their own was injured. So what do they do to the injured animal? They kill it. We, but we just won. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. I just I you yeah. know and I gotta tell you I I you know uh, I've never been a big fan of Franken's n- not for the normal reasons that most people would not be yeah. a fan of Franken's but because he used to beat the shit out of me at pinball. Uh, <laughs> wow. Years ago, That's we used to go, we, we used to go to this bar down in the down in the village uh, that had a pinball machine, and we used to play pinball there. And Franken would come in and start playing with us, and uh-huh. he was he he was great at pinball. Wow, he's a monster on this. And, on I can't, but he but he <laughs> did but he did touch my ass, and uh, I'll never. No, we him. can't have that. <laughs> we'll never forgive him for that. No, but. You know, you're not a political comedian. But- Nowadays, with what's going on, you know, you got to mention some of it. So I do, I do, I do a little bit, little, little piece on it. But uh, no, I would definitely not consider myself a Will Burst or a Barry Crimmins or a, yeah, you know, now, whoever. You know, but nevertheless, I was going to say, how do you avoid talking about this? You know, you don't. I don't. Anyway, it's things are there, and I'm going to riff on them. So. And a lot of it's political because every day, every single day, this guy in charge says or does something insane. So how can you not talk about it? Not that I'm going on stage a lot now, but when I do, there's a, you know there's always guaranteed to be fresh news that day. So you know how can you not talk about it? Well, I, I, At least I, I a little ta- bit. Yeah. I was talking to Rob Schneider, and he said that he's not making jokes about Trump. And I said, Why are you? Uh, for- well, he's a supporter, as far as I know. Uh, huh? Is he a Trump supporter? No, no, not at all. I thought I thought he was. I thought he said some like, hey, you shouldn't protest against Trump or something. No, I no all I know is what I he told me. Well, what he told me, he didn't. I didn't get the impression he was for Trump or wasn't for oh, okay. Trump. Okay, but what he did say is the reason he isn't doing material about Trump is it's like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's just too it's too easy. He he. Yeah. He, oh, guess what? That's a uh, that's a. Uh, wait a minute. It's it's one of those uh, those damn uh, uh, robo calls. There's a Chinese guy at the door. What the hell is it? I, I, I got to turn the phone off here. Yeah, uh, I get these robo calls. I signed up against robo calls. You know, at, uh-huh. and, and I I still get them. I just get them like crazy. oh my god. And uh, you know, the do not call I, list. They, but these things are coming from like you know Spain or Russia or <laughs> wherever. Oh, I get a lot of things that phone ring and it's a scam likely, scam likely. I never answer it and they never leave messages. But Oh, do you have I that mean, little yeah, program yeah. that tells you when it's a scam? Yeah, well, not always. Sometimes it's an 800 number. I don't answer that. And then uh, sometimes it's a scam likely, scam likely. It's so gotten to the point where if I don't recognize the phone number, I don't oh, answer I'll never, it. No, I don't answer it. You know, no. because anybody that I want phoning me, I already have in my phone, and it will say it's that person calling. Exactly. I better see a name and not a number, and I better know the name. But you know how many of these? Hey, look, I have no friends left. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, they're all they're all dead. Uh, to all dead. Uh, you know, my friend Steve Gruberg is dead. My friend Bruce David is dead, and I didn't have that many friends to begin with. I mean, I, I consider you a friend, but uh, hey, you don't live here in New York, and I don't talk to you. I talk to you every week, but to do these right. No, nah, we we don't go to Needix like we used to. You know, you know I, I, ta- I take the term friend seriously, not like Facebook does. You know, exactly. And, yeah, there's and, Facebook friends and there's real friends. Yeah, there's and, and friends, friends are a person that you you know that you can call when things are bad, or they can call you when things are bad, and you exactly. got somebody to talk to, and they care. All right. Exactly. So I had three of those in the whole world. Steve Gruberg, there you go. dead lung cancer. 
uh, Bruce uh, David, uh, editor of former editor of, of Hustler, dead. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All I got left is my friend Richard Sheckman, Shecky. It was a, oh, I know Sheckman, yeah, sure. yeah. You know Sheckman. He worked at the Letterman yep. Show. Sure. And I told him he better not die before I do because I'm I I I don't like being alone. Okay, so I I don't yeah. have people that call me like crazy, and it's not like all the radio stations are calling me to say, "Hey, you know this Gabnet thing sounds like a good idea. Why don't you come do it for us?" No, yeah. I haven't received yeah, I a single one of those, so I'm not going to get any business calls. Uh, yeah. So hey. what the fuck? You know, I'm not answering the phone. You know, <laughs> there you go. No but, reason. To... But these robocall people don't get the idea that they never get an answer, and therefore I'm a waste of time. Yeah, <laughs> they 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 don't give up. They got moxie. I'll give them that. They got pep. Well, no, they've got a machine that just you know. They got a machine. In fact, I they used got a to have a machine, and uh, it keeps calling it. I used to have two phone numbers: my cell phone and another number, and I could count on. That if this one rang, the f- say the cell phone rang, that within a day yeah. the other one would ring with the same number. <laughs> they found it. In they other words, no, it. because they just the robocalls. They just keep going through numbers, going through numbers, going through numbers. I can't tell you yeah. how many times I've gotten calls saying, "Would you like to do something about your student loan?" <laughs> yeah, I'd like to oh. get one. How about that, pal? You know. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, it, I keep getting emails. We'd love to lend you money, Dennis. I was sure. <laughs> there's no Dennis here, but I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, there's the Nigerian prince. Yeah. Oh, I get those all. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I sometimes I, I I interact with them. You know, boy, you can say, really? I can get all this money? Yes, just give us your PIN number and this and that. Oh, really? That's great. I'd love to have the money. Just yeah. let you just send it to me and I'll, uh, I'll minus the thing what it would cost me, the $800. No, we cannot do that. Oh, come on, be a pal. Why is, it, why, say, is, you. why is it he's always a Nigerian prince? That, I, uh, that way you can't take the bus to him and find out what he really is. So I'll tell you, though. I always had, a Nigerian prince. He's falling off the cliff and you inherited a million dollars or you won the... You won the Polish lottery. You owe us $4 million. I had an email address uh, for, God, ever since I came to New York, okay, with the cable company. Yeah. Uh, I can say it now, folks. You can write it if you want, but you'll get nothing. A. Bennett get nothing. at uh, nyc.rr.com. Everybody had that as my email address, all right? Uh-huh. So when I suddenly dropped... Uh, Time Warner or Spectrum as they later became and went to Fios because I got mad at Spectrum uh, I had to get I, I lost my email address and oh. I so I, I made up my own email address I, I, I pay to have my own email address and that's fine too you know that works great what yeah. happened sure. was my spam mail while I still do kind of get I get spam I, I get mail from solicitation mail from people that I've subscribed to, but basically I'm not getting spam anymore. The, sp- uh-huh. the spam seems to all be going to my Apple account, <laughs> you know, but I don't, I very little of my spam ever comes to my current address. So, but if I have it for the next 10 years, you can bet I will get on the spam list, you know, uh, there you go. <laughs> so, so every now and then, I think you got to change your email address. Um, uh, I've had the same one for like how many years? Because I've had a computer for twelve years now. Oh my god! Is it with your your supplier, your internet service provider, or yeah? Is, I'm I'm still stupid enough to be with AOL. So there you go. So I'm, I'm with them, and uh, they suck. <laughs> but I still keep the email address because you still I'm lazy. you still keep an email address yeah an AOL yep. address I have an AOL, AOL. address a AOL address I never use it I went out and got all these addresses because what I found out was FiOS doesn't have email they did but uh-huh. they did away with it I guess because they found it wasn't worth it you know uh-huh. uh, so uh, they had email uh, they had no email. So I had to go get my own email address. So, so I started signing up for AOL. I signed up for, uh, uh, oh, I don't know. I signed up, oh, Gmail. That's, that's yeah, yeah. I love Gmail, folks. That's where you've got to figure out a name that you never had. Um, uh-huh. No, because 
uh, if you if you uh, write to Gmail, if you try to get a Gmail, and you try to just get your uh, obviously, I would like to have a Bennett. That would be nice. Okay, that's sure. simple. Yeah. Uh, but I tried all kinds of things. You have to go to like so and so twenty one hundred or something. You know. So it yeah. it really gets it really gets uh, uh, to be a pain in the ass. So I it's a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, I found out I had I had, I, I had gabnet dot net, which is the name of my company, uh, because I there have a go. I have a website, and with it came uh-huh. a small email account that only would take a certain amount of email. So I called them up and I said, "How do I get more email?" They say, "Just pay us one hundred and ten dollars a year." And you can right. have uh, whatever name you want at gabnet dot net. So, wow, ta da! You know, there you go. Perfect. You're in business. And, You're and, in business. And it's really simple. It's very simple, and people remember it, and uh, it's fine. You know, there you go. Keep it simple, kids. Keep it simple. Stupid. But, uh, That's the rule. Um, but I, I, you know, still I get these phone calls. Most of them are my student loan, uh, which I, <laughs> I, I, I never had. And I'm too old to have. <laughs> oh, I, I yeah, and uh, you know whatever. Uh, Not that money you borrowed in 1956. Do you think you'll be paying it back anytime soon? Uh, yeah. The dean. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just got a thing from uh, from. Uh, let's see here, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, she wrote. You see, I, I sent her. You can bet. I I haven't even read it yet, but you can bet that this reply. Is a uh, is a robo reply. Thank you for contacting <laughs> my office. Your thoughts and concerns are very important to me. So far, generic, and you will receive a more detailed response shortly. I sincerely appreciate your patience in waiting for this response, as our mail volume is often significant. If this is a request for assistance in a federal agency or immigration case, <laughs> yes. yeah. In so, other words, just leave us the fuck alone. We yeah, don't even know I, I got one from Bernie, uh, and that one said, thank you for taking the time to fill out my share your thoughts. Uh, this note is to let you know the message has been received. For more information about it, she, she, she at least is promising to get back to me. Yeah, you know? someday. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it, 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 you know, Shaki's right. Why are you writing them? It doesn't matter to them. You know, it makes you feel good and you've done your part. It, 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 it's and, it's well, kind well, of, yeah, it, yeah, it, it just makes you feel good that you got irate. But I, I wish yep. I, you know, I maybe I should, you know, I have nothing to do at this age. I, I really should. <laughs> Uh, I really should be a pest, you know. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're underestimating <laughs> older people when they try to <laughs> fuck. Don't be old man who writes life letters. Well, yeah. when they try to fuck us over, as I said, you know, um, a person who is uh, eighty years old and has been told he has terminal cancer has no reason why he shouldn't be a human bomb. <laughs> oh, sure. It's talk and kill someone at that age. If you you know, <laughs> I'm going to so, go anyway. So, I'm going to make deadlines. So don't fuck with us old people because some of us have nothing to lose. <laughs> All right? That's right. <laughs> I'm 62 and I feel that way. Already. But instead, old people just go, I'm not going to get my Social Security. Well, you strap a bomb to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You know, Kidnap a politician, strap a bomb to yourself, and jump off the Empire State I, Building with it while the bomb goes off. Boom! Everyone will know you. I'm surprised that more people who are old and have terminal diseases don't do that sort of thing. They should do that. They should do that. You, you know, uh, I, there was a story a couple of years ago. I, I love this story. I mean, it's a sad story, but there was this guy who uh, was thrown in jail for many years. So when he got out of jail, it turned out they let him out for compassionate reasons because he was dying of terminal cancer. This happened in Marin, uh-huh. Ca- Marin County. So he went to the city hall, found the district attorney that convicted him, and killed him. Oh. Well, God bless him. They should build a statue of that man. And then they turned around <laughs> and shot him to death, and he probably was going, thank you very much. You did me a favor. Thank you. I don't have yeah, to. that I, was quick. And, I, I don't have to go. What? 
Uh, now you'll thank the lot. You made it quick, and now you'll remember me. Yeah, you did yeah. the right thing. They should build a statue of that. Man. Yeah, so I'm wondering why more people don't do that, you know, when they find out yeah. they got a terminal illness. Uh, exactly. That guy's name should have, he should have started a floodgate. He should have, everything seems to be known to every school child in the nation. But the reason they want to take away Medicare, the reason they want to take away Social Security, uh, is because they don't think old people have the kind of gumption to get out of the house and complain. You know, they don't want to yeah. fuck with young people. Young people can sleep on somebody else's floor for the demonstration that's going to happen the next day. Me, yeah. I, at my age, I go, well, if i got to go to Washington, I have to get in the car, and then i got to find a hotel, and then I... Yeah, yeah. what's the weather going to be yeah, like? What's the weather? Uh, uh, it's good. It's, it's, too, it's too cold this year for a protest. I'm, I'll it's try too later. too cold. All right, man. And the Vietnam days have never stopped us. I remember marching and freezing my ass off. Oh, man, I remember sleeping on people's floors, waiting for the demonstration sure. the next day, going out the next day, and there were the cops there and the tear gas and the billy sure. clubs and the whole thing. <laughs> the and good I, old days. I remember sure. going to Times Square and doing a protest, getting kicked in the shins by cops, you know? <laughs> and I went, hey, sure. yeah, I got kicked in the shins by cops. Now I go, you look at that bruise. <laughs> look at that bruise. Is that, is <laughs> yeah, that a yeah, bruise? That's how you met girls back right there. Yeah, so they... they got whacked in the head with a sign. See that scar? Oh, yeah. The reason they don't care about old people is that old people don't complain. They really yeah. don't. You know? Uh, I mean... Gotta how, organize the great Panthers. Yeah. You gotta get them out there. But I just, you know, I'm just... I'm just... I, I hate the fact that we are, you know, even you, you know, you can take an approach like, well, I don't give a shit, right? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let them do what they're going to do. It doesn't, but it does affect you, you know, and it does make your life yep. a little worse than it was, yeah. you know, right. and I'm sure you're not wealthy, so you need a little assistance, but you've, you've worked over the years. You've worked hard over the years of what you do. Very hard, very hard. Whatever you know, is. and you chose a profession that, you know, is a crapshoot. You could have either become a star <laughs> or you could have become an yep. opening act, you know? Yep, exactly. And and uh, now that you're older, you need to be taken care of. And how old are you That's now? That's right. How old are you now, Steve? Right. 62, my Social Security kicks in and I'm going to lay back for a while. The same age as my friend Shaggy. Um, there you go. You know, <laughs> ready to get hit by a safe at any moment. But Boom, you know, like, piano. like for instance, with me, okay. I mean, I'm I'm ready to work. Any anybody want me for a radio station? I'm ready to go to work. But I'm yep. I'm going to be 78 next week. Do you think anybody will hey, hire hey. me? Do you think I can get a job somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I gave up. I gave up. It. I gave up even trying. The day they fired yeah, me yeah. at at Sirius XM. I looked at him and I said, well, I guess this is the last job I'll ever have. And they went, oh, no, no, you're still great. You'll get work. People know. No, yeah, I won't. Right, right, right. I was When that Stop happened, me, I was 73 years old. Come on. Nobody's going to hire me. Yeah. You know? And when they did. Just the morgue. The morgue will hire me. <laughs> it's a and when hey, they, when hey, they hey. did, and they hired, you know, they hired me to do some relief work, I did some relief work over at WOR, and when the person who knew the people over there said, well, how'd he do? And they went, he's a real pro. Well, yeah. that's code for he's too old to work for us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but he's they can't say he's comic. too old that's to work for hard. us because then they could get into a lot of trouble. Right, do, you, right. do you find that age, oh, is, right. age is catching up with you as a comedian, that they write you off a little bit because of your age? Well, without, oh, that's, that's, probably, that's probably, yeah, I would say so. You know, I'm not the young guy anymore. It's a young person's game. There's a lot of young faces out there. And there's older guys who are still working, too. If you don't mind being on a cruise ship your whole life. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I've never been like a, a corporate geek guy, so. You know who told me? Uh, yeah, to, you know who told me that Ray was caught up, yeah. but I'm not looking for that much work at this you, point. You know, who, the local. you know who told me that age is affecting him? Slayton. Who? Bobby Slayton. He says the clubs. Are, uh, you know the clubs aren't uh, aren't hiring people like him because a he's getting older and he wants uh -huh. a certain amount of money that they don't want to pay. They want the young comics who work for next to nothing. Exactly. Exactly. They get somebody probably doing his act. <laughs> so, to do this to like one third the money, so it's just 
I go, he's way, every time I go on stage, he goes, he's like, hey, I'm like, what are they? He's eating pizza. And then I follow him. He's always, he's oh, he's always eating pizza. Something. You know, uh, I, I got to tell you, folks, <laughs> Bobby lots Slayton of, is lots one of pizza from around the nation. Bobby Slayton is one of the skinniest people I know. For a yep, guy his age, got a, got, a, got a trim body, right? But every yep. time I look at him on Facebook, he's eating fucking pizza. I know. Yeah, I'm eating a big jar of mayonnaise on pizza. Yeah, I weigh 14 pounds. What's Stop he, doing that. You were a big jagger, man. You never gave it out. It's like Bubbles old line. What's he cutting his Coke with? Butter? You know. Butter. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hey, 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 hey uh, great talking to you, Steve, and let's do this again. Good talking to you, weeks. Alex. A couple of weeks, let's do it, and uh, uh, I want to wish you a happy holiday season. A happy harmonica, a cool Christmas, a cuckoo Kwanzaa, whatever else you want to worry about. Ladies wanna and gentlemen, you, whatever you're into. the famous, well-known, I lie... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I've in three areas. Hey, coach, listen, folks. I'm a has been. I can make jokes like that. Uh, I'm a never was. Well, yeah, you <laughs> you were in my book. Okay. Thank you very much. Ladies I'm and the gentlemen, Bennett Turf of my day, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, thank you. Then. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's our good friend Stephen Pearl, and uh, we're so happy that he was able to uh, join us this evening, uh, in spite of the fact that most of you aren't. Very light listenership tonight. Well, I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm, beginning, I'm beginning to get frustrated with this whole process. I really am. After about four years of doing this, I'm beginning to say it ain't going nowhere, you know. So I'm just doing it, uh, I guess, to be doing it. Um, so... If uh, if you don't want to listen anymore, I don't want to do them anymore. Okay, so that's that's that. It's simple. It's uh, whatever. Anyway, I got to get a few things going here. Uh, Phil isn't going to call tonight. He was nice enough to let me know he wasn't going to call. Uh, so that means that it's uh, it's safe for the rest of you uh, to give me a call. I was just looking down, getting stuff ready here. And we just, uh, oh, I have to turn on the phones here. Uh, let me turn some other things off. I have so much homework to do here before we can ever get a show on the air, and I'm the only one doing it. You know, it's not like in the old days where I had a whole crew that prepared stuff for me and did it. I'm switching the show for the TV video part of it, and I'm I'm uh, playing this, uh, the uh, audio, and I'm doing the whole thing. So anyway, that's that's what that's all about. I don't know. I've just been. I'm. I may just be that. I'm. I'm kind of ill today. <clears throat> Let me get a throat lozenge here. These are coldies, actually, which are better than throat lozenges because they have zinc in them, which helps make a cold go away. Maybe we'll see. <clears throat> anyway, um, uh, but I'm a, a girlfriend has just. She's very sick. She just came down with something so sick. She hasn't gone to work. Uh, she came home from work early today. And just got into bed, and she, you know, she didn't yell for me to do stuff for her, which I would have been happy to do, but she couldn't yell. <laughs> that was that's how bad her cold is. So I mean, I've got something, and I think it's maybe the same thing she has, but I've reacted to it differently. It's put her out completely, and me, I'm I'm just you know, eh, seeing what I can do here, you know. See if I can get by. So uh, I need you to call me and to be part of this program. And if you don't know how to do that, you can do it using Skype. Go to gabnet.net. I don't need to give you the primer on this thing. It's all there on the right-hand side of the page. There's a whole column of how to, how you can actually be on the show using Skype. And also at the bottom, for those of you who are still at your grandmother's house, and she, uh, she has one of those old-fashioned telephones, uh, you can, uh, there's a telephone number down there you can use to call, and that will put you on with Skype as well. But anyway, so I'm just going to sit here sucking on a th throat lozenge, waiting for somebody to call, if anybody. Uh, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a little light uh, this week. Uh, uh, so I, I, you know, you get highs and lows in this whole internet uh, deal. Last week, I don't know what it was, we had this spate of just, on the video, just tons of people watching. Just 
tons of people watching. And then this week, it's been like nothing. Now, I don't know if that's something with the accounting over at, at, at uh, Facebook. Excuse me, I have to blow my nose. Let me at least kill the mic. Uh. Oh, guess who's calling? Uh, here he is. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah. How you doing? You you told me in a, a little email that you've been really busy. Yeah, lots and lots of stuff going on between uh, work, mostly work. Yeah. Just been crazy. So, you, you get, but I, I did the. Uh, I just finished the uh, promo. The pr you finished the promo. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. It's uh, in the Dropbox. Oh, it's in the Dropbox. Oh, maybe I should play it right now. I don't. It's is that the the sequel as we call it's it. It's the sequel. It's the sequel. I don't know that I like it. Why? I don't know. It's one that I'm not sure about. Uh, well, maybe then was it my writing? Nope. I I you know I always adjust that stuff. I make it more concise a lot of times and yeah. Um, but I just I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> My production. I'm not sure I like, I don't want to, you know. Are you end. being too critical of yourself? No. Yeah. Huh? I just don't know that I like it. But anyway, um, I'll play with it more. I just it didn't get, I got a late start on it. Well, don't just, you know, you, there's no hurry. I just wrote you something because I figured what the hell, give you something to play with, you know. Uh, if you if you want to, if you can't, if you can't get around to, it, you feel rushed at it, or you feel you can do a better job if you have some time. There's no rush. I appreciate. It's not a matter of it's not a matter of doing a bad job. It's a matter of my editing, and I'm not sure I like the way it. I'm not sure I like the the way it came out. You, well, you tell me. Okay, well I'll listen to it, and you know, and you can still play around with it, and you know, we, whatever. You know, I just appreciate everything you've done for us over the years. You know. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. So, um, you're sick, huh? I'm, I, I'm, I, I have, I think, whatever she has. But I don't have it as badly as she has it. You know how t two people can get sick in the same household and both of them get it in different ways? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, oddly enough, I had a girlfriend once uh, who we, we've talked to occasionally on this show, uh, Schmoody, mm -hmm. uh, who... Uh, Oh, what's what's wrong with Mike? He's not. Uh, he's he's. I can't get his connection to grab hold. Uh, there we go. Well, oh, hold on a second, folks. Now I got to go back to Rob. Where, where's Rob? Wait a minute. Where's where's Rob? There's Rob. Okay. Well, we lost Mike. Okay. Doesn't look like I still see him. Well, you see the picture. Uh, it's gone now. Yeah, I just got rid of him. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know Mike has more trouble uh, hook, uh, hooking on here for some reason. Boy, you look t you st you're tired, aren't you? <clears throat> between between that and and this diet I'm on is brutal. What diet are you doing? Well, I'm on a very um, radical diet. Let's put it that way. Well, wait a minute. Well, hold on a second. Radical. I don't see you anymore. Huh? I don't see you anymore. You don't see me anymore. Yeah, your camera's off. Is it really? Oh, there we go. Huh. How's that? Now you, now you got me? Not yet. It's spinning. It's spinning? Okay. Yeah. So I'm the one who's doing the spinning now, huh? Yeah, you're spinning. You're still spinning. Yeah. Let me see here. Oh, now, now, listen, we're having trouble here. Uh, we're having trouble here because I'm having trouble with Patrick getting on. Um, let, me, let me just restart my Skype and everybody can call back or I can call you guys back, okay? Okay. All right. Let me get let me get rid of Skype here, folks. Uh, let me see here. Um, this is why I hate this whole thing. I'll tell you the truth. This is why I'm just absolutely perturbed. There we go. Let me just stop it all together. Let me kill it. Okay. Uh, quit Skype. Okay. All right. Quit. All right. Now I will start up again. And we will call the people again. Sometimes there's something here. Sometimes it's not here. It's, it's Skype. Um, it's an imperfect system, folks. Okay. There we go. Put in the password. And I sign on. There we go. 
and we're going. Okay, let me let me call Rob here. Let me see here. Can we get him on? Let me see here. Call Rob back. Hello, Rob. See, Hi. I just called you. Now let's see if these other people can call in. And, uh, there we go. Now Patrick, it says add to group. So I add him to the group. And here comes Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Whoops, I don't want that. Oh, boy. I'm having all kinds of little there we go. problems here. There we go. Okay. Uh, hi, Patrick. Yeah, I had to restart. It and I don't know what the hell we're going on. I don't know. I had to restart. I, I rebooted uh, my uh, Skype here. So, yeah. Oh, you, might, you probably rebooted when I tried to get on, and, and then I rebooted. So. No, when you tried to get on, it didn't say add to group. So And I had trouble with Mike. So I just decided I would just kill my Skype, restart it, and that seemed, uh, hopefully that fixes the problem. We'll wait till we see what the third person does here. Well, that's know, what I did. I killed it and restarted We never know what wonderful stuff um, uh, Skype is going to give us next to make our lives a living hell. Anyway, so what would you think of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the aftermath of the election last night in uh, Alabama? Patrick, <laughs> I'm, I was watching him live, and I mean, he still hasn't conceded yet, has he? No, no. Yeah, so I mean, no, we're we're alive on the air when when he went on uh, on Mike, and then he started quoting the Bible, and that it's in God's hands, and you know, I made the comment, well, God must not like him too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, I was surprised that he would actually fight it. And I realized it, it's a sliver uh, loss, but it's not that it's not it, it's not that much of a sliver. I mean, it's not like a sliver like you had in Minnesota with Al Franken, where there was what was the uh, difference there? Something like uh, three hundred and twenty-five votes or something. This wow. is, this is about thirteen thousand difference. You know, right. so it, 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 it's not close enough that a recall would probably create any other outcome. The write-in votes killed him. Those write-in votes obviously were not Democratic write-in votes. Were not Democratic write-in votes. Right, right. Yeah, it was so, about 2%. Yeah. Yeah, about 1.5% or something, 1.6, which is about what he lost by. Yeah. So, uh, so, so I mean, this is, uh, this is, a, this is a, you know, this is a good win because we got another uh, senator. Uh, that's a that's a Democrat, and now we've got um, a sick Republican because McCain's in the hospital. Yeah, and uh, if he doesn't get back to vote, you know, this one guy could change the whole thing. Well, but the tax bill is going to be before him. They're going to vote on the tax bill now. Well, they're trying to get it in before he gets up to Washington. Right. And they're, they're trying to prevent him from doing it. Schumer was out today saying, hey, we're going to try and prevent this vote. Well, you know, we'll that, what happens. I think they're going to have trouble. Who? I don't think it's going to be that easy. Getting it passed? Yeah. I just I still think there's going to be infighting amongst the, the, amongst the party. But you know what it is? There are certain people that are standing outside saying, I, I don't know if I'm going to vote for or not, Republicans. And so they put something in the bill to make them happy that has nothing to do with the bill. You right. know? Uh, we're going to save the spotted owl in Oregon so the Oregon person will vote for us. And uh, and I'm going, what does this have to do with a goddamn tax bill? You know? It's Patrick's favorite thing. Yeah. You know, and all the, the crap that goes along in these bills to get someone's vote. Yeah, exactly. So, huh? It's crazy. It, there, for, to me, there's no reason to be doing shit like that. I mean, if it's if it's a bill, if it's a tax bill, that's what it's the center on. Yeah. Now, if there's something within the bill you don't like, you can adjust that. Like, if there's a percentage of something you don't like, or you want this added in for this type of tax or whatever it is, mm -hmm. but you know, 
in front of the fucking owl or uh, some fence line somewhere or some other bullshit. Who cares? I don't know. You know, uh, I think that um, they're going to have trouble because some of the, the, the real conservatives who were part of the Tea Party, to me, are not going to like the, what they're doing to the deficit. They don't have a way to pay for these tax cuts. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, who's still kind of a holdout, I think, I don't know if he's a holdout anymore, but is Rand Paul. Because he, he, was, he was saying that, you know, he felt that this is, was irresponsible financially. Well, then you would, think, you would think that all of the guys who were there when, who, who opposed the, uh, the, the health care bill, yeah. you know, the, the, those, that, that team of, what are they, what's their name? There's a name for that team. Um, that those guys would oppose it because it's going to increase the deficit and that's what they're against. Yeah. Well, Rand Paul's against the, you know, the way it's going to cost money. Uh, but who knows? I, you, you may be right. They may find that they don't have all the Republicans in line that they think they're going to have. And right now, I mean, if they can get, uh, uh, what's his name? The guy that won down in Alabama to Washington fast enough. Yeah. The difference, if we've got McCain in the hospital, is maybe one vote. So why can't the Democrats do what the Republicans did when it came time to put a, uh, a, a when Obama was going to put somebody in the Supreme Court? They said, hold on, we're not doing anything till our guy gets here. Well, they'll still take the vote. And if the Democrats don't vote, it passes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it, it's it, they've what they've done here is something that's almost a, the most disgusting thing I've seen in my lifetime. They have passed. They're trying to pass a bill that affects the pockets of every American. OK. And could for the foreseeable. Another 40 years. OK. Uh, and it, it's horrible. People are going to have a hard time living with this. Uh, it's not going to be bad for me. I'm going to do fine. I'm I'm uh, elderly, unemployed. Um, I will get a uh, between my wife and I twenty five thousand dollar tax deduction, which is twelve thousand more than I think, or I can't remember how much more than we used to get. So we're going to wind up getting a little bit money back at the end of the year. But but fuck me, okay? I don't care about me. I care about every American, and they're going to have to live with this for a long time to come. And for the Republicans to not hold hearings, to not, it, it, they wouldn't even let people see the bill until they put it before the House and Senate. The same MO as they did with the other bill. And the version they had, some of it was handwritten. Granted, that's a lot like the Constitution. But, you know, outside of that, you know, it was, it's a, it's a, it's a fraudulent act. Okay, yes, yep. Patrick. Democrat did that uh, with uh, Obamacare. Uh, Nancy Pelosi famously said, "We need to pass it before we know what's in it." Did they do that? Yes. Yeah. Well, I I think even if you gave them the bill, most of those assholes wouldn't have read it. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, so why you know? They, they get their people's people to review it. Right. And and the problem with that is. If Bob and I could get the same stack of papers for you, Alex, and, and you're the congressman or whatever, mm -hmm. and Bob and I can interpret the same sentence differently and parrot it back to you differently, and I may paraphrase it a little bit differently than Rob, and it would have a totally different meaning. Wow. So that's why I I think it's bullshit if you people don't read their own. We're paying them enough money to read the fucking bill and read them. That's what the flunkies are for. Right. Oh, well, yeah, all right. Exactly. But, it, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, what, is, what is preventing I, the guy from Alabama for just, just driving up to Washington and taking his seat, grabbing his he office? Sworn in, right? He can be sworn in, but he can be sworn in in five minutes. You know, it's not like we only I, swear oh, people in twice a year. Right now, I mean, a formality is that the election isn't over because uh, Moore is still contesting it, right? So until that comes to an end, he couldn't do that. 
Yeah, yeah that, that's true. Yeah. And they're yeah. saying that's going to take till the 26th or the 27th, no later than January 4th or 8th or whatever it was. There was a window starting around the, like like the couple of days after Christmas, the week of uh, between Christmas and New Year's until right after New Year's. Yeah. That's what that the attorney general of, I guess it was the attorney general of uh, of, of Alabama said last night. Uh. He must have been shocked. All of a sudden, here's this guy. It's what eleven o'clock, ten probably ten o'clock and all. I don't know what time zone they're in in Alabama. Their own, I guess. It's, yeah. It was ten o five when it was ten o'clock everywhere else. Uh, but um, all of a sudden, Roy Moore comes out and says. You know, the press can go talk to the attorney general. We're going to be in 20 minutes. And this guy was probably in his in his pajamas already. <laughs> in a scramble to get dressed and go stand in front of a flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, did you see him riding his horse? That was Roy Moore. That's such a he's a car. He's a cartoon character. Uh, well, to begin with, they say this is people who know he doesn't know how to ride a horse. I saw him on it. I mean, he wrote it. But that he doesn't really know how to do it, how to ride a horse. That he, he was riding them, all, riding them all wrong. Oh, really? I don't know. Yeah, he had he had this, the reins like this. You know, kind of like the horse was a pony and he was a kid on top of it. <laughs> uh, that, that he was very bad at that. And that the horse, you can tell from the horse's actions that the horse was not happy. The probably way he molested was being the handled. horse. He probably more. No, the horse was, uh, well, no, he was younger than 14, so that's possible. Oh, see? Yeah. Yeah. Unreal. I mean, he's a caricature of himself. Yeah. The boy had and the, and the horse riding up to the polling. I mean, yeah, come on. He's trying to prove himself to be something he isn't, you know? And uh, it's a fra fraudulent appeal he's trying to create to his... Uh, minions out there these people with uh, missing a tooth who think he's a good idea i i i felt so good last night when when i heard that he didn't win really i was like yeah you know and then senator flake said it best decency won tonight in his tweet yeah yeah well yeah. i think so and i it, it it's just a shame he didn't lose by more that you know if they'd have been a really decisive loss the people of Alabama's reputation would have been uh, restored. Here, it's still a little bit tarnished because that many people still voted for this douchebag. Yeah, but it's it's a red state, and and it, you're not going to change that right. overnight, even right. with something as goofy as what happened. Um, yeah. But I will say, I was listening to my local talk radio. Uh, host uh, this morning and then uh, two of them this afternoon. Yeah, nobody was disappointed. I mean, and and none of them uh, were supportive of more. And and they still, I mean, they were all shaking their heads with uh, when uh, Trump was endorsing more at the end. And I said, why would you do that? Well, you, you know, know something. Actually, if you think about it, the the Republicans dodged a bullet last night. Yes. Because they don't have to deal with this. Um, yep. Uh, yes and no, though. What? Because they still have to deal. And if I were the, you know, if I were in charge in the DNC and it, when it comes time for the midterm elections, I'm not going to forget that the RNC backed this guy, spent a lot of money on this guy, went in there. You know, these the, the party backed him. He lost, thankfully. Yeah. But the party still backed him. So, to me, that's a black mark. Yes, uh, Patrick. Remember, they, they pulled all their, all their money from him a few weeks ago. Yeah. And, and, yes, they did go back and back him, but it was kind of a last-ditch effort, just like with Trump. And I, I certainly can't defend that sort of thing. But I think the person who had the worst night last night was Al Franken. Because there was a guy who was going to hold out and maybe announce that, you know, I'm not going to uh, leave if more was elected. But it looked like the governor of Minnesota already appointed uh, the lieutenant governor to replace him. So Franken's hopes 
went up in, in smoke just along with Moore's. Well, I don't know if that's the case. Yeah. I don't know if that was the case. If that they, you know, they were, they were trying to, you know, that he was waiting for Moore to win it and then go back in. I don't think that's what I, he was I would, planning. I would bet my wheelchair. That's it, exactly what you're it would, yeah, I would give him plenty of uh, moxie to go ahead and do that for sure. But you know something? Uh, I don't think that was the way it was planned because yesterday before the election uh, was, you know, the results came in long before that. The governor of Minnesota announced that he had a replacement for, for uh, Al Franken. So I don't know if that's the case. Um, but, you know, if, if, if this bill goes through, uh, if uh, Al Franken's seat eventually becomes Republican, which it has in the past, even in very liberal Minnesota. Um, uh, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand should feel very bad about what she did to Al Franken. You know, I, I, there were other ways of handling it. it, it you know, the, the rebuke, whatever. You know, there, the plan is for them to take the high road here and really lobby women lobby senators lobby everybody to come out against the president because he's the one guy who has a whole shit ton of people you know he's a whole bunch of women who have we've heard from and we're starting to hear from again who's uh, he's been accused of sexual misconduct and why is it that everybody – why did Al Franken need to leave but the president doesn't? Well, I mean that – why Why in in the light of it – here's the reason Hal Franken had to go. And this was Kirsten Gillibrand's plan all along. He was the sacrificial lamb He because if they got – if they took care of him, then they did away with any criticism the Republicans would have when they decided to go after Trump, when they decided to go after Moore. Right. And so he was the sacrificial lamb. Given any other atmosphere out there, Franken would still be in office. So what do you think if women, women are getting riled, women are, you know, what happens if they start marching Washington on this? What happens if they really put together a coalition and lobby heavily for well, something I, I have, to be, I have one, with, one question for you, Rob. Will they make dinner first? <laughs> it's TV dinners, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I understand Kirsten Gillibrand's desire to coddle her female constituents, but not to the detriment of, of, of the politics in Washington. She is ups upset that ecological balance by by getting rid of Franken. Uh, what's his name? Uh, um, the, the black guy. What's his name? Uh, oh boy, I can't remember Will names. Obama? Uh, no, the the black uh, congressman who or senator who quit. Uh, oh, uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Mister Civil Rights. Yeah, well, uh, he yeah. he was he was. 88 years old. He wasn't going to last long anyway. It was about time for him to say, I'm giving up the ghost. You know? He was a congressman, not a yeah. senator, right? He was a congressman. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sick tonight. I can't think straight. Um, so, I, you know, I mean, uh, it, 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 he, uh, Conyers, he should have he should have gone just because he was 88 years old. When I heard he was 88, I said, "Why is he still there? Is he trying to outdo Strom Thurmond?" You know, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I know how much my brain cells have deteriorated in a few years. I can't imagine at 88 how far they will be gone. All right, uh, and uh, you know, I'm even beginning to question my own ability at doing this show now. So. I don't want to stay. I don't want to overstay my welcome, you know. But uh, uh, Kanye should have quit a while ago, and he didn't. And and now, and of course, it's now. You know, there's this. I call it a fad. Uh, I might also call it a lynch mob, uh, trying to root out everybody who ever patted somebody on the ass. 
Um, and I think that, you know, we, we have to go back and, and, and argue the fact that there are, there are different levels of this. And Franken's level was not egregious, okay? Uh, nothing he was accused of uh, outside of that first woman, Leanne Tweeden, who's a Republican, and she was a birther, and she had every reason to come out with this thing. Outside of that, no, nobody else really came up with anything. Oh, I, I, he grabbed my ass while we were taking a selfie. Well, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, you know. Um, but there was nothing egregious there. So, uh, you know, I hate to see him go because of that in the, in the, in the, in the what could we call it, the, the uh, fog of war, as it were, in this whole thing. And the fact that... Um, that uh, Kirsten Gillibrand was just looking for somebody to hoist on a petard so she could then go after the president. She could then go after Moore. And the way was clear because you could say, see, look, we cleaned our own house. Well, you did a lousy job of it, Kirsten, and I will never vote for you again. Anyway, yes, Patrick. Well, I mean, what did that say about the men in the Democratic Party? That they don't have enough balls to say... Look, we support what you're doing uh, with trying to root out all of the men who do this, mm -hmm. but let's not cut off our nose to spite our, you know, spite our face, which is sort of what happened with Franken. You know, I mean, you know, what did the, I mean, Schumer, I know you don't like Schumer, I've never been a fan of his, but. You know, what about guys like him who have some uh, moxie in the party that they would be able to say, hey, look, we don't need to sacrifice anybody. Let's, let's look at this. You know, he already volunteered to go to the ethic uh, deal. Let's do that. Let's not just kill him. Yeah. To me, it just sounds like the, the men in the party are a bunch of wusses. I think they just want zero tolerance, and yeah. that's it. Well, zero tolerance is too absolute, so far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. and <clears throat> in something of, of gradations as we see them here, Jeff's got his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Well, one of the things I kind of remember that everybody forgets about is that New York City mayor left because of that similar problem, uh, what is that, six years ago, eight, ten years ago? Well, let's see. Um, How long was Bloomberg uh, mayor? Bloomberg was mayor for 12 years, so it wasn't Yes, Bloomberg. it was before then. Uh, which before which, the, which trying to his name. I'm trying to remember the mayor that was here then, because I... Before, before that was Giuliani, right? Before that you had um, Dinkins? Dinkins. I think... Dinkins might have been accused of something like that. I don't. No, know. but yeah, he might have been. But he it was. A, him, it was Lindsay. There was. Uh, yeah. It was a Jewish guy. who was. Uh, oh, you're talking about Koch. Koch was a. Uh, you uh, sure uh, it was the mayor of New York City? Because they, I think I mentioned all of them. In, who was the governor? He could have been governor. Maybe he was governor. Oh, 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 oh! Yeah. You're talking about uh, the guy with the hooker. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. What's his yeah. name? Uh, client uh, nine or whatever they used to call him. Uh, well, anyway, sure. Okay. Okay. So the governor there. Okay. Yeah. The Democratic governor, and also we we also had the problem with the uh, guy from Queens who was the um, uh, he was a congressman. Elliot uh, Spitzer. 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 Elliot Spitzer. Yeah. That's his name. Yeah. And he was the governor, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was a, anyway. a elite service run by the Emperor's Club. <laughs> and you, you remember the woman. I can't remember her name now, but you remember her. She's good looking. You know, he pay, if he's going to pay. And, he, and that, wasn't, that wasn't sexual improprieties. That was just simply adultery. You know, because he yeah. was paying a hooker. It wasn't like he was doing this against her will or, you know. That's true. That's true. He was paying her to pat her on the ass. You know, I mean, so yeah, wherever but, but I'm just kind of make the overall consideration that that I think the Republicans have their position and their position is always like 
screw you, it never happened. Where the Democrats <laughs> have already ha are always in this position, like they can never say it didn't happen. Right, because they're honest. They're, yes, <laughs> what did she somebody say? might say they're honest. Okay. Well, you know, but but here's the thing, and, and they're in trouble with that. And they, I think they figured out. You know what? There's a way for us to win against uh, the president right now. And and the Congress, who are going to be what? voted in the next year, and it's a position for them. It's a strategic position. Yeah, but you and see, it's, you see, it's I, hardball. I, what is the what is the um, what is the uh, what is the profit of man to uh, admit his guilt in these cases? We've been, you know, if guys admitted their guilt and then people went, okay. Come on back. We love you, and you've seen the error of your ways. But we're not doing that. We're saying, oh, you did it? Okay, we're getting rid of you out of the Senate. Or we're making You're you dead. lose your TV show. <laughs> You're dead to us. Well, yeah. then, what does, you know, what, what is the, uh, to any guy from here on in who's caught doing that sort of thing, just deny it, you know? Uh, because you're going to get the same penalty either way, so you may as well lie, you know? I think it's uh, they know that they're going to get the penalty on the short the short term, but I think they're thinking the future, right? And so everybody does that, right? You you admit your guilt, you apologize, you you then can come back later. Otherwise, you're not coming back. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's, with that is Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, we have wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm trying to find uh, 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 what's his name, Smiley. Over at the PBS, uh, yeah, he got caught, and he got he's on suspension from PBS now, or NPR, PBS, PBS. Uh, he's he's on suspension because they found something with him, and the guy who goes on right to before him was Charlie Rose, and they got him. Right, you know, pretty and soon, pretty soon, it's going to be all the Sesame Street characters, you know, <laughs> who are going to go next. Do you ever think we'll see Matt Lauer again? No. No. No, really? You think he's done? Well, I mean, we might see him on basic cable, <laughs> you know. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. I think you're going to see Matt Lauer the same way as we see Megan Kelly. From the top to who? <laughs> oh, I remember him. Wasn't he on? And that's going to be it. Because Megan Kelly already... It's irrelevant. I mean, because I'm sick tonight and I'm bad with names. But uh, who's the guy who was the the evening news guy uh, before Lester Holt? Uh, see, I, what's yeah. his name? Yeah, you I know? can see his face. He's uh, on, he, you know where he is? 11 he's on MSNBC at eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, oh, yeah I know. Brian Williams. Brian yeah, Brian Williams. Yeah, it's Brian Williams. called the eleventh hour. Nobody's fucking watching television at that time. Well, out in California, it's like on at eight o'clock at night. But he's he's writing his contract out. That's a very good. That's a that's a good one. Gary Brian Williams. Yeah, but, was, but, but here's he the was, thing with Brian Williams: it had nothing to do with sex. Well, he lied right. about right. something. I can't even remember what he lied about. It wasn't so egregious that he lost my confidence as a news it's guy. About being embedded in helicopters yeah, that were yeah, shot yeah. at or something. And yeah. yeah, he was uh, a helicopter got shot down, but he didn't re yeah. didn't really get shot down. Right, he wasn't in that helicopter. Yeah, you were lying on that ship. But Embellishing. Well, because, now it's in fashion. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's been moved to irrelevancy. Yes. And that probably, exactly, Matt Lauer ended up being on, like, the Today Show uh, in this time slot right after Megyn Kelly. You know, it would be like, you know, 11 a.m. when nobody's watching any television. They're walking mm. the dog or doing something. I, so. I, got, I got moved to irrelevancy, and I didn't even do anything. So, you know. Well, your political views uh, didn't mesh with what they wanted over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you were still on their side. That's the, that's the, that's I, the I funny was, thing yeah. with politics, regardless of party, is 
if you are not exactly in line with those who are in charge, they can sideline your ass and you're done. Wait a minute, you're a lefty and you don't like Obama? <laughs> yes. Why? Because he's not left enough. You know? Uh, they couldn't understand that one. Yes, uh, Jeff? Yeah, but I think that had a, a financial uh, equation uh, as to your leaving. Yeah, well, I think they didn't like the fact that they were paid. They were, I was getting paid better than most there, except for the big name stars they hired. Yeah, I understand. I wasn't getting Howard money, but I was getting no, a decent salary, and then uh, uh, Albert was probably the highest paid producer outside of the Stern show in the building. And Wait, so you were, you were hired in Richard Bay. I was what? Hired in Richard Bay. I was higher than yeah. Richard Bay. Yes. But Richard Bay just replaced me whenever I went away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wasn't very good at it, but you know, well, I remember a television show and when I heard that he was going on, I thought, what the, it was just that I wanted to take a vacation, and they said, "Oh, Richard Bay will take over for you." Okay, go ahead, and let Richard Bay take over. I don't let me go on vacation, and I'll I'll take care of the damage when I get back. You know. Yep. I I never listened to his show when it wasn't you on. So. Yeah, yeah. But but you know they didn't. Uh, they, yeah, I mean. Uh, Did Albert produced those shows. Yeah. Oh yeah, Albert was my producer, best producer I ever had. I honest. mean, he produced Richard Bay. No, uh, uh, well, when he was when he was here and I wasn't, you know, when I went on vacation, yeah, you know, in other words, Albert produced the show, period. Oh, okay. and whether so I was, was there or not, unless he was on vacation, in which case he got somebody to come in and produce for him, right? You know, but basically he was my producer, uh, and so if Richard Bay came in, he was, you know, he facilitated what Richard Bay did. Hello, Kevin. How are you? All right, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm got a little on the on the sickly side, not as sick as my wife, who is like you know a veg. Yeah, I heard. Uh, but uh, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, well, yeah, it's that time of the year, I guess. I know we got our flu shot, so she doesn't have the flu. She's got a cold. It's not very effective this year, the flu shot. Really? Yeah, I've heard that. Yes, very low effectiveness well, this we, year. We got a double dose. We yeah, got it's a, a different and, strain, and I think. Here's why we got a different dose. Don't you? Does this happen with you, Jeff? When you go, you get a double. Yeah, dose? I get the double shot. Because what, when you're over double, 65, uh, they give you a double dose. Yeah. What do they give you? Just twice the amount, or is it? I think it's nah. twice. I think Add it's twice, stuff. The, twice the power or something. You know, I don't know if that's twice as much. You know. But uh, so, so far, I have so far I haven't gotten sick from the flu yet. But the same stuff is going around, Alex. Like your wife has. A friend of mine, two sisters I know, one is getting over it, and she's still coughing. Yeah, yeah. Coughing and, and everything else with, that goes along with that. Yeah, but th just because you've got it out in California doesn't mean that's what we've got here. You know? Well, I get the local news. I watched the. I was watching Channel 4 the other night and saw that they did a report on this thing that's going around that's not the flu, and a lot of people, especially on Long Island, are getting hit with it. Yeah, it's just a cold. It's a bad cold. A bad cold that really drags you down. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's she's too. down and out. Yes, Jeff. Well, he, whatever the real uh, thing is, a flu or not, the the best thing that you can do to protect yourself is wash your hands. Yes. And don't let, particularly if somebody else has touched your hands, touched your equipment, you go into the gym. Okay, and you're going to work out, and you're going to use the equipment. Clean it first. Right. And that, that's, well, my, uh, my that's wife, what all the nurses tell me. I told me my wife, I said, I can't, I can't touch you. And she said, why? And I said, because that's how you get cold. She doesn't seem to get that simple. It isn't that when people can blow, you know, sneeze in your face, and you might not get it. But if you shake hands with them, it's a good way of getting it. Yeah. And so you should wash your hands a lot. Okay, yeah. you carry some Purell around with you. It's basically disinfect yourself. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, this is always one of my favorite conversations because none of this shit uh, is pertinent to me. Because I'm using my hands for everything outside, inside, in 
bathrooms, everybody's fucking floor, everywhere. And well, because you're also using the, the, the wheelchair and the wheels hit the ground. And uh, I, I don't know how you yeah. don't get dog poop on there in your wheels. Yeah. Well, I, I did it. I got bird shit on my hand uh, <laughs> a couple of months. That's a good name. For, it, that's a good name for a song. I got bird shit on my hand. I mean, the thing is, I wear gloves. I got gloves, but it, 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 I may have said this on the show uh, in the summer. Um, one of my favorite things to hear people bitch about is, well, I don't like going barefoot outside because, uh, you know, my feet might get dirty. And I, I tell people, well, I use my hand the same way people use their feet and they're always bare or they, I have gloves and I got to eat with you. You don't eat with your feet. And no matter, I mean, if I go to a restaurant, yeah. I go in the bathroom to wash my hand before dinner. Yeah. But I'm still in the bathroom and I still got a wheel out of that bath. I didn't even bother. I just, many times, I've got wipes that I keep in my uh, pack. I'll use those. And many times, I don't do anything. I mean, I'm sure I built up an immunity to shit that most people <laughs> just be every day. Well, uh, no, you know, you know, he's right. With the, uh, you know, you, you know the reason why polio came into being in such preponderance in the uh, in the forties, and, and it affected children, was because we had become such a clean society that we weren't getting the antibodies that we once got back in the days when everything was filthy, and so a disease like polio didn't become opportunistic because you kind of had an immunity to it. And then when everybody started cleaning up and washing their hands with soap and we started becoming a very sterile society, that's what made polio come into existence. That's been and, the, it's, and it's happening again today with all of these hand sanitizers. Yes, I was using one. We had one at, at Sirius. And I would every time I go in the bathroom and finish, I'd, I'd use the hand sanitizer because they're kind of addictive because just the way they smell and... And the, and the way they feel on your hands. And after a couple of weeks, my hands were drying out. That's the alcohol. But yeah. you can get all kinds of crazy warts and all kinds of things that, you know, you're taking all the natural uh, bacteria off of your skin. Yeah. And that causes you could get crazy warts and all kinds of stuff if you're too sterile. Wow. Jeez. Bacteria is good for you in a certain <clears throat> Well, you know, makes, what, what don't kill you makes you stronger. Well, it's like the, your parents were sometimes told by the doctor, uh, uh, have your kid uh, get out there and, uh, uh, you know, play with the other kids and get all the childhood diseases, you know, get the, yep. get the uh, mumps and get whatever. I, I never had mumps, but uh, I, I never had chicken pox, I didn't think. But then I got, uh, what's it, uh, the, where Ch you... Uh, the, years later, you get it because shingles. shingles. I got shingles, and I mm. went, "What's this all about? How'd I get shingles?" And apparently, I had a girlfriend who got chicken pox at twenty-three, and I was around her, and I didn't get it. And I think when I was a kid, I had like a, a small dose of it, and I just we just didn't know it because it wasn't that bad, but it was enough to to uh, immunize me from. Uh, from from chicken pox, and yet I did get the uh, shingles um, right around my eye here. And if I didn't get it taken care of fast, I would have gone blind. But that's oh, another shit. story. I'd wear a patch over my eye, and it would be a great hit. Uh, yes, Patrick? <laughs> um, when you said, uh, go, you know, doctors say, go play with the other kids, I play with poop and piss on a regular basis in bathrooms, so... Oh, I you thought know, that was just in, kind of a sexual <laughs> thing with you, and you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I rolled through puke, and and the thing <laughs> is, it uh, you, well, sometimes you can't see what what. All right. Depending on where the sunlight is and that, uh, until me... you rolled through it, and I'm glad I'm I wear gloves, but I I think if I had to roll through puke, I would pee my pants. <laughs> let me let me let roll me, through someone else's puke. Let me bring something up here. Then. Roll through piss. Let me bring something up here. You know, I don't know how many of you go out and see porn that's out there that you'll admit. Uh, but uh, 
I come across stuff every now and then, and I go, who enjoys this? It's not that it's horribly perverse, but for instance, women shitting on each other. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, who who wants to watch that? You know? I mean, I don't want to see shit even when it's in the toilet. I try not to see the shit, you know? <laughs> There was this thing called what two cups or something. What was it called? You know the, the this tape that was going around, and mm. I told somebody after I saw it, I said that's a phony. They they rigged it up. It's all it's it's kind of like not special effects, but they're using like stuff that looks like shit, but it really isn't. Uh, but you know uh, it. Who who watches a peeing f videos? Who wants to see somebody peed on? I don't I just don't get it. You know. I, if somebody peed on me while we were having sex, or I, uh, I had one woman who wanted me to take her into my stand-up shower and pee on her, and I, I accommodated her, but I, I found it very hard. I got a very shy bladder when that happened. You know, it's like when you go to the doctor and he says, go in the cup, and it takes you a half hour to go in the cup because you got to go in the cup. And when you got a woman in a shower and she says, I would love it if you would pee on me. And you go, okay, baby. And then you're going, and what's wrong? I can't pee. I, you should have let me know. I would have had a lot of water before we had sex tonight, you know. But I didn't find it sexually arousing to do that to her. I was simply accommodating her because that was something she wanted. See what a nice guy I am. Mm -hmm. Patrick. Yeah, I, I've got a buddy of mine that every once in a while will try to send each other their most gross or most out there one photo that we can find. Yeah. And I found some of that stuff that you're talking about. And it just makes me wonder I'm not gonna step there and judge what other people find you know, whatever turns you on is fine as long as you're not hurting somebody. But the the shitting one, that's the one that I can't there's no way I can wrap my head around where that becomes arousing. I, I mean, I understand people like, um, you know, uh, S&M, they like to be tied up, They're, you know, tickling fetishes, things like that, that shit, I don't know. Maybe it's because <laughs> I roll through it and, you know, it just... Yeah, no, I mean, I just don't understand. I've even seen videos of women uh, 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 deep-throating guys and throwing up all over them. Oh, and I'm going, I'm going, well, you know how it is when you see somebody throwing up, you start to want to throw up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and so when you see that, you go, uh, I, you know, I mean, who could jerk I off to like that? They, who could jerk like off to they that? They spit. I just don't like it. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. That's Reminded me of another thing. Um, someone that I, I, that I knew years ago, dating somebody in a wheelchair and it wasn't me but she was dating a guy in a wheelchair and part of his disability was whenever he would orgasm yeah he would either shit or he would puke <clears throat> way that his body reacted with these spasms and she she had a very difficult so time. you're kind of coming and going at the imagine. same time right <laughs> he, he, he's coming and he's coming. You know, I mean, do you know all of a sudden our numbers have gone up here talking about this? <laughs> Would you want to have sex with somebody and every time they came that you were going to get one or the other? <laughs> see ya. No, yeah, but see ya. Coming on, out of both ends at the same time, you look like a human pinata. <laughs> I think it's worse if, if if you don't know which end it's coming from, <laughs> rather than if it's coming from both. <laughs> it's, it's just the, the surprise there. Okay. Well, in the immortal words of Jerry Seinfeld, who are these people anyway? Who are these people? But, you know, the, the thing is, like in my case, the first time that I had sex after I got paralyzed, that was in my head because I didn't know what, I mean, I was masturbating like you wouldn't believe before I actually had sex for the first time after getting paralyzed just to see what was going to happen. And thankfully, the way my body is, it worked the way it's supposed to for everybody else. 
So in other words, in other words, you're paraplegic, but you can get it up. I can get it up. Everything works. Somebody just got to help it along. Well, of course. Right, and I mean that that would come with age too. Now, do you have? Do you have? Can I ask you this? Do you do you have any feeling down there? No. So so. And I've got a funny story about that. Oh, okay. By the way, I, I, folks, in case you just tuned in, this is fun with paraplegics night on the on the ramble. You should write this book. For me, it's funny because first time I was with my ex, um, we had finished up, and we were just laying there, and she said, basically, well, how was it? Because she knew that was my first time after being paralyzed and I, I said it was okay and what I what I wasn't realizing was I was thinking it was okay because my concentration was where was my feeling at I wasn't thinking that she was with me in the experience and here and she told me about a year later she said you know I almost left you that night and never came back because that really hurt my feelings. And then I explained to her, I said, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't that. It was me trying to figure out where you, I'm at. You were trying to process why you hadn't felt anything physically. Or if I did. You know, it was yeah. while she's doing her thing, I'm concentrating more on what am I feeling. And there were little sliver the feeling here or there but yeah that came off the wrong way to her and from then on anytime we had yeah. sex it was fucking mind blowing well, it, was, it was awesome yeah, yeah. But, yeah but you're a better man than i am because if i if i were para, went paraplegic and i could still get it up but i couldn't it didn't have feeling in my penis i just say fuck it and use it to crack open walnuts you know <laughs> well yeah but if she's enjoying it, why not? I mean, yeah. what the hell? Well, that's I, uh, yeah. You know, you know it's got to be frustrating. That's all. No, because but you I, I remember think, what it was. I think like. Patrick could probably say he was getting pleasure out of giving her pleasure. Absolutely. That yeah. that's the thing that I've always enjoyed since becoming a parent. Absolutely. Is mm. Learning that and enjoying that more. Yeah. And believe me, if somebody going down on me it's great because i can see that they're enjoying themselves and it still works so great you know i yeah. can't feel it but i'm not going to bitch about it you know yeah imagine not feeling that <laughs> it's just my can, can i ask you a very personal question do you come yeah oh okay okay yeah good. and that's the weird thing i mean it, it, but how, do, how it, does your, you know, your mind processes an orgasm because you're feeling pleasure there, but if you're not feeling it, how do you have an orgasm? That's my what, question. What it is, is, it, um, it's kind of it, it like neuropathy, um, or when your hand goes numb or, or whatever, where you don't feel it, but you can still move your hands. Yeah. You can still pick something up, but you may not feel what you're picking up yes. because you have that numbness. It's sort of the same thing. That the only thing that I can really equate it to is, you know, you know that it's there. You know what it's doing. Yeah. Um, so, and, so the inevitable question is, <clears throat> are you surprised when it happens? Because no. if you don't feel anything. No, because it, it works. And normally, as it did before. But you see, no, I, I, mean, I, 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 I know what you're I, I don't mean surprised that it works. I mean, you don't know when it's going to happen because you can't feel that you're climaxing. Oh, that way. That, that yeah. I mean, that that's kind of weird, too, because there, I've got certain spasms that happen when it's going to happen. Oh, so, so I do know. Oh, when so I'm you know when it's going to happen. Yeah, I, say, okay. I do know that. Um, and for that, I'm very grateful because I can at least, and it's weird because the feeling that I get is right in my thigh, my right thigh. So that, that's where the orgasmic feeling is. 
in my fucking thigh. Oh. Wow. It's weird. It, it's bizarre, but it's life. And what are you going to do? I mean, you know, I just enjoy what I, what I have, you know. And you don't feel anything else in that thigh for any other purpose? Yeah, I, I, it, it's really weird. That particular small spot, it's about the size of my hand. I have almost full feeling. Oh, wow. Nothing around it. You could take a knife and jam it in my leg, and I wouldn't feel anything, but I might feel it in that spot. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That's like my neuropathy. Yeah, it's the same thing. Well, I found out today that my heel has disconnected from my foot by seven millimeters. I didn't even know you could do that. Well, I have neuropathy in my feet now, but it's from, I think I've got a uh, sciatic <coughs> thing. and it's, Yeah, this it, is a result from my first ankle fusion. Oh, well, it, and it, that, because my, heel I, I went to my off. doctor and I said my feet are numb all the time. And he just pointed to my back and said, right there, that's where it's coming from. Go, you know, if you want to do something about it, go see a, you know. Try acupuncture, Alex. I could, you know, but isn't that supposed to make things numb? No, that's supposed to that that stuff is pretty incredible. I had a, a girlfriend once who had uh, who who cured uh, what do they call that um, carpal tunnel carpal tunnel with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I um, um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. I yeah. you know, I'm, I have all these little things. My little torn meniscus, you know, which is. Uh, a minor problem now it's it's gotten slightly better uh but it's never going to clear itself up unless i want to go have an operation and then there's a chance it won't work and so why go through it you know uh so uh, you know pretty pretty soon you're going to see me hobbling around and then next i'll get myself a wheelchair and i can come over and see patrick and we can have races you know you can you can drive through vomit together I won't be well, far behind. You know, I, I, I am a, a guy who's afraid of dying, and I don't want to die, and uh, I want to be a burden to everybody for as long as I possibly can. What is it about dying that you're afraid of, do you think? Is it a fear, or is it just, I don't want to be, I, I want to be here? I don't want, well, I want to be here, and I don't want to not exist. You know, I can't cope with the idea of what not existing is like. My father always used to have a nice saying about it. He said, well, you've been there before, you know, but all my life I've had this great fear and, uh, you know, I've said, well, I'll worry about it when I get older, but I'm older now, you know, and it's an inevitable. And, uh, so I worry about it a lot, you know, but, uh, uh, it's a question of, uh, you know, how long will I keep going? Who knows? You know, I could go to be 90. My mother was 100. See, I don't have that fear. Yeah, I have, I have, I have the thought a lot, too. And then and then you go, uh, well, I'm not going to know anyway, so what the hell the difference is? Yeah, but see, I don't know what it's like <laughs> not to know. That's what, the, the, you know? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's where the only way I can rationalize it. You know, um, so I think what I've got to do is just, you know, uh, enjoy what I got now. Oh, which absolutely. Is, which is a torn meniscus, numb feet. Uh, what else is wrong? Uh, that's about it. You know, I have a little arthritis here right now. It's bothering me. It's winter time. Uh, you know, but I, 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 I don't know. You know, I just, uh, I, I, getting old sucks. It, it does. really sucks. Sure. You, you would think that, you know, Roy Moore, if you're listening, if there's a fucking goddamn God, he would have made things better as you got older, not worse. Am I right, Jeff? Yeah. 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 You know, what are you trying to do, God? Are you trying to say, I'm going to make your life as miserable as possible so when you finally go, you'll be happy? You know, is that the philosophy? Yes. Hold on a second. My fear is more based around getting sick than dying. Yeah. Oh, you mean being an invalid? Yeah. No. I mean, having uh, going to the doctor one day and telling and him telling me you've got lung cancer, you've got this cancer. My father got pancreatic cancer, yeah. And that is a fear, and and more than dying. I, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of getting sick and feeling pain and being miserable. That scares me more. Well, you know, my ex, my mm -hmm. former wife, my wife yes. number two, has pancreatic cancer, and she had it operated on, and. She's going now through uh, uh, for an operation that 
uh, is used only on about 10 percent of the people who they feel would be good candidates for it. And uh, so she's, she's going through all that. And that's that's not a fun disease to go through. Although your mean, father, that's, prob- that's your, more. your father probably didn't have the chance that my ex-wife has. You know, He was 83 when he came down with it. And uh, he had about two just under two years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Hello, John Rockwell. How are you? Hello. I see we're in the or I see we're in the uh, in God's waiting room again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Welcome to God's waiting room. I'm feeling good, actually. Thank goodness. But you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, anyway. Yeah. Where, oh, where, where, you where, where as you get older, we just have nothing more to do with our lives and grow beards. <clears throat> so, you know. And chat about all our illnesses and, and things, yeah, definitely. Well, I, we were just asking, every now and then I like to talk to Patrick about his paraplegic uh, si- si- situation because I find, number one, I find for any of you out there who might be facing the same thing, Patrick is an inspiration. I mean, Patrick has dealt with this in just a phenomenal way. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, and uh, don't let me embarrass you by saying that. Uh, but so I, I then when I get him on the subject, I always have these questions because you've got all these these goofy questions about it, you know. And uh, have we gotten too goofy tonight? No. Just how do you come? Things like that, you know. I I mean, one of the one of the first things that my ex and I discussed once we decided we wanted to move forward was. We discussed the whole sex thing like we are here. I mean, I and I told her, ask anything. And I tell just about yeah. anybody, you got a question, ask. Well, I still you know, I still, if, I still, don't want to be your friend who, when he comes, he shits at the same time. That You know. <laughs> I mean, it, it just, it, it, for me, I, I figure, you know, I, I, somebody got a question, I'll answer it. I had a friend of mine who was a paraplegic. And he hated people asking him questions. But that was his personality. Um, me, I try to disarm people immediately because the wheelchair is always going to be there. Yeah. So let's focus on me and not the chair. Well, you know, we've never seen it, actually. Because when we see you, it's from the chest up. And so we've never actually seen that you're in a wheelchair. <clears throat> I've, I've got videos on uh, Facebook of me doing shit oh I, i'll go to the fa- your facebook page and look at them yeah it, it's are there any there, are there any there of, of you coming oh no pa- facebook won't allow that <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll private message you that one i'll huh? private message you that one pro- oh really yeah. <laughs> lovely i hope i hope there's no shit or pee involved in it please no, no shit or pee <sighs> i wanted to say um coming off of what uh, rob was saying with being sick and that and pain, um, that's the only thing that I fear is that I know that things are not going to get better for me. I, they could medically, I mean, with technology and that, but you never know with me because if I slip and fall in the bathroom while I'm transferring, there's always that possibility where the rods that are in my spine could bust through the skin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 now show me some shit. <laughs> Quick, show me some shit. <laughs> right. Oh. Here we go. Mm. Paralyze me more. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff. Uh, Patrick, I had a cousin, and I think she was like a teenager, and, and she was in the bathroom, and... Uh, she was reading something, and the picture scared the crap out of her. And I can't remember what it was. But it was something that she just found it scary. Okay? Yeah. And she kind of went back and fell down on her head. Yeah. And uh, mm. she was knocked out on the, the can reading a, ma- a magazine. Which is yep. absolutely ridiculous, but you know this is the way a lot of people. That's the end. I mean, for my Elvis. cousin, she's fine. <laughs> that's a yes, the Elvis factor. Well, I mean, my cousin's still alive. She, oh, nothing happened, to her, but died. yeah, 
But she was knocked out. And her mother had to kind of pull her out. And, Please, are you alive? Want to die is on the can. <laughs> well, and 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 that, but you know that's the thing. The king um, did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like in my family, my my mother, uh, her habit has always been she'd take a uh, shower before bed because it relaxes her, and then you know she's ready for the night. Me, I have to be on. 100% whenever I'm dealing with any sort of transferring in and out of the shower. So a shower for me is not relaxing because mm. I'm dealing with wet surfaces to begin with. Then I got to transfer from the bench into the chair. My feet are wet and then I got to be on the foot plate to be able to do that. And, you know, everything's a big fucking project. Do you, you, and you, keep, do you, keep, do you, do you keep like a cell phone nearby in case something does happen? Yeah, but but exactly like what Jeff said, what if I would have slipped and knocked my ass out? The phone's not going to help. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. My dad, yeah. My dad at one point was he was he was able to get around but not very well and so he had a he had a chair in his uh in his bathtub and he would have to he come over with his uh with his walker and good and stand next to the bath and then sit down on the edge and swing his feet over and get his legs there. And one day he was in the process of doing it yeah. and somehow didn't quite get to the uh, to the to the chair in the bathtub and fell back into the bathtub with his legs over the bathtub and his back on his back. And he wasn't even close enough to where he could get to the pole you know, the I'm falling and I can't get up thing. But in his this he was in a in a what do you call uh, uh, his, his uh, senior complex? They had a buddy system thing where in the late morning, one of the other, another, he had like a partner would come in, knock on the door. They they had left the doors open, come in, check on him. And there he was like, you know, with his feet up naked in the bathtub. So they were able to pull him up and everything. And it didn't really hurt him, but he couldn't get out because his legs, his knees were over the bathtub. You know, wow. how do you, how do you move from there? I couldn't even do that, and I can move, you know, yeah. which is weird. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, Patrick, someday that you'll look for uh, somebody to live with, regardless if, say, you, you don't meet marry, and at some point you're going to need assistance with that. Roommate. <laughs> Gets. Wait, can't hear you. We, we can't hear you. Your microphone's Your mic's off. Working. Your, Your mic mic's off. Your mic's not working. Uh, the, uh He's good. Yeah, that, yeah. Can I go out for a second? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. All right. Um, I've thought about that, and that—I that, mean, that's another thing. I'm 42 now, and I can still do everything that I need to do. But what am I going to be at 52? I would imagine not much different than 42. But what about when I hit 60? Is it going to be different? You know. And so what I've thought of is rather than getting a roommate or something of that nature, is at that point probably move into like a senior community sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Assisted living, yeah. You know, and they've got, I mean, they're not nursing homes anymore. No. They're, you get your own apartment. Nice places that are no really different than what I'm living in now. Right, sure. Just part of a community and like um uh like john dad you know with the buddy system that's the sort of thing you would yeah. have but uh and they yeah. have the pull cords for you know i've fallen i can't get up if he was in the if he had fallen in the bath room he by had way, he could by the way, reach over to and, our audience and someone with security would show to, up to our audience who's listening and watching right now <laughs> gosh this is what you have to look forward to <laughs> yep what can you just say? You know, yes, such is life. Yes, Jeff. Well, uh, the reason I didn't talk to you last night, yeah, is because I had an early uh, doctor's appointment today. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing uh, I could say is, when I left the doctor's yeah. office and all of that, my wife says, "Well, what'd you think?" I said, "I actually think this is terrific. I had such a good day." 
and I'm so happy. And I think that we made a, an accomplishment that I've been working on for six months. And, and it's, it's technical pass maker stuff, which it's too technical. But, the, you know, for me, it was a big thing that after six months, I think we solved what the problem is. And at least we could be wrong, but at, at least I made some uh, mental uh, improvement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think it's going to work too. And if it's, if it's not right, well, we'll work on it differently. But uh, for, for me, kind of the medical stuff keeps me going. It keeps me motivated and interested. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't consider it to be like a, like a disaster. I, I think it's just something you got to work with. That's, that's different, right? You know, and you you got to resolve it somehow, yeah, or accept it, yeah. You know, and there's there's lots of accepts in life, yeah. You know, I know Patrick's got them, but yeah. and, and we all have a little bit less, but um, oh yeah, we ultimately, as you get older, I think you have to you have to accept those, or you could be like Alex and just bitch your bottom, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, John. <laughs> Okay, I have a, a good friend and local uh, drinking buddy who's not all that my, he's actually probably a little younger than me, but he was diagnosed with what they call progressive bulbar palsy, which is basically a variation on, on ALS, where it, it, it progressively makes it harder and harder for you to swallow, talk. Right now he talks like this and sort of drools a little bit, which is why they realized it was something was wrong. The problem is it's progressive, and there there are a few, a couple of medicines that might help a bit, but it's still sort of early. The thing is, he pretty much knows that in the next year or two, he's going to be to the point where he's going to basically not be able to swallow, breathe, and everything like that. But he is such he has such a good attitude toward it. It's like okay, those are the cards I've got. What do I do now? He's going and visiting friends and people, letting them know what's going on. They went down to D.C., you know, and hang out with some friends. He's At Christmas time, they're going going around Europe with his, with his teenage daughter and, and wife. He's doing it all now when he can do it. You know, I'm just like, I'm just like, well, the guy's know, amazing. You know, <laughs> you know I, like, I've often, I'd be like, oh. I've, I've often, like, I've, okay, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, well, I just got to do it. You know? I, I often wondered uh, what, I would want to do given that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, and uh, I, 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 occasionally I've said, well, my father used to say, when I die, let me get hit by a Mack truck. You know, <laughs> you want to be fast, right? And, and then I thought about it and I read this article about, uh, I think it was uh, Ingrid Bergman. And mm. she knew she was dying. She had terminal cancer. And she went back to Sweden and said goodbye to everybody. And she also made amends with all her friends and said goodbye. And I figured that's not that maybe is the nice way to go, because mm -hmm. you're able to like button up your life. You're able to put a, 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 a close out on it or whatever. And uh, you know, uh, I know Patrick has <laughs> sent me the. Uh, I watched my father go through fear and anger and everything that went along with that diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Your, your uh, life isn't your own. You're a, a slave to the, to well, the, well, the uh, treatments. Well, and, what my wife, what my ex-wife has been telling me is you become, she puts it this way. Uh, and if you want to read about it, she has as time goes by or time goes by dot net is her blog. And she writes about this and about getting older and so on. And she said, she had a great fear, and now she finds it's come to pass. She's become a professional patient. There you go. Yeah, that her yep. entire life is, and it, you probably find it's true with you, Patrick, her entire life is dictated by the things that have to be done to get through the day. You become defined by it. Yeah, Absolutely. you become defined by it, yeah. And she says that's the part she doesn't like about it. You know, um, on the other hand, when I talk to her most of the time, she sounds great. You know, she's as peppy and as zippy as she ever was. You know, I still wouldn't want to pick an argument with her, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but is she, uh, 
Uh, but but she said this prof being a professional patient and the fact that her entire day is, you know, at, at noon I have to take this pill and at three o'clock I have to eat this and whatever. And I can't eat this, but I can eat that. And that it mm -hmm. becomes an entirely different set of rules than you've lived by in the past. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's what you're what you're talking about, uh, Rob. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Of course, your father no, no. was older, so you know he, you know he was lucky to live that long. Uh, it's just a shame that he had to go with something like pancreatic cancer, which ain't no walk in the park. Well, he was lucky; there was no pain. Oh, really? Mm. Got away without any pain. Listen, mm. uh, by the way, when it comes to pain, let me uh, talk to you people out there for a moment. Uh, girlfriend uh, today, yesterday, she had this cold, right? So she called the doctor and she says, I'm coughing like crazy. Can you just call the pharmacy and get me some of that wonderful codeine cough syrup? And he says, I can't. She says, why? He says, they make it difficult on us now to even give you codeine. He said, you're going to have to go to a pulmonologist and get like an okay on this and that. And all this was was like cough syrup with codeine. You know, when mm -hmm. I was a kid, my mother had so many bottles of that around the house. I was looped every time I was, go you know, got sick. <laughs> you know, pretty much. And, and what now? Now he's a, he's afraid as a doctor he would get in trouble for giving her. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, I deal with it all the time. I'm dealing with it right now, trying to get my pain meds. But, well, she she's on <clears> some <throat> a lot of pain meds, but you know she and they have to watch her carefully. Yeah, I had to. I have to count. I have to keep, you know, logs and the whole bit. Are you listening to this, Such folks? Are you listening problem. to this? This is what you have to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. Think of me. Think of me as the Sacagawea of aging. You know, and I'm leading the party of, of pioneers out into the wilderness that is called getting old. All right, and I'm here to tell you. As I put my hand up to my forehead and looked at the view in front of me, it don't look too fucking rosy. Anyway, <laughs> yes, Patrick. It, the only the only thing that I don't like about being a paraplegic is dealing with the pissing and the catheter. <laughs> oh, and, Jesus. It, and it isn't using the catheter. It's I've got to think ahead. When I go anywhere, how much I'm drinking so that I can make sure that, one, yeah. I don't overfill my bladder, mm -hmm. and, two, that there is a bathroom that's available for me to use. So if I go visit somebody's house that I've never been to, I have to ask them, are your doorway 33 inches? Um, and then, you know, if there's steps, we need somebody to get me up into the place but as far as the bathrooms I need to be able to get in the bathroom and I've, I've been to friends houses where and even family houses where I can't get all the way into the bathroom because they're not big enough but I can get to the toilet and use a catheter so at that point I just have somebody stand sentry just to make sure you know not, none of the kids are like so that. in other words you, you roll the catheter out and you don't to go through the into the bathroom no, I, I go into the bathroom. Oh, I see. And, and I, use, I mean, I, I can only get close enough to the toilet, but I've been at parties where the outside parties, mm. and I'll go into somebody's garage with an empty soda can and piss into that. Yeah. I mean, you may do with what you have to, but... It's a, it's a, tec it's a technique that Patrick has described on many an occasion as grab it and stab it. Right, exactly. <laughs> So that's the only thing I don't like about being paralyzed is it, it's a constant thinking and adding yeah. and subtracting of how much liquid you, you know, can take. This is, this, You're is, always this, planning. Is, this is a true story. But years ago, when men would get gonorrhea, some of them, here we go, folks. This is isn't this talk you love listening to. <laughs> this is talk like you've never heard it before. Yes. Uh, uh, it. Uh, that guys who got gonorrhea, uh, the problem was they didn't have the drugs to fix it, so eventually the dripping and stuff would go away, but what it would be replaced by would be a closing up of the urethra. So these guys would have to have a catheter, and they would wear hats and wear the catheter in the brim of their hat. So there's a little clue for you on how to keep your catheter around. Uh, either that or, or just strap it to your side like a bullwhip. 
<laughs> you know. want to keep clean now. Yeah. And then I see these ads on TV. You know, you know that nothing but sick old people watch television now because they have ads for like catheters now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Night Live. Every medicine ever it, made. <laughs> it's made my cathing much more pleasurable. What do you mean pleasurable? Unless it makes you come, it's not pleasurable, okay? And then they show him up in an airplane. You think he's going to stab himself up there in the airplane, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. God. It, well, if, if he, it, but you know, the good thing is if you're driving down the road, it can be, Patrick can tell you this, and you run out of gas, you can always use it as a siphon. So, you know, that's good. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yes, uh, who had his hand? Burn like hell the next time. Just... Jeff, Jeff. Yeah, so uh, I have a somewhat similar thing with Patrick's problem with urinating, uh, and that is uh, there's a medication that I have to take in the morning, but in the morning it it makes you pee like crazy. Mm -hmm. And what, of course, what, the what, next, what's the drug's name? It's called uh, Lasix. Lasix. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I, Never heard of it. Right. I have a similar thing. Uh, Bumex, same idea. Water so, pill, they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Water pill. So. Yeah. A little, little pill. Just yeah. helps get. No, not that. <laughs> well, I take I take I take a combination of Cialis and Finasteride, and I pee like a racehorse now. I, when I started taking that, I said to myself, "God, I feel like I'm old, I'm 13 again." You know, because I was getting jealous when I started when I started getting a enlarged prostate and I it would dribble out. I I always was jealous of the guys in the stall next to me or I'd hear this flow going, you know, like, you know, right. Huh. You know what I'm talking about? Rob? Oh, oh, sure. Time. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I had urine envy, you know, I think there's a little pill. It's like a, they say take a half, but the doctor let me take the full pill for uh for high blood pressure, it's a water pill. It takes less than a half hour. Boom! I'm in the bathroom. Oh yeah. I got if I'm not close to the bathroom, close to the bathroom, get the hell out of my way. Oh, with, yeah. And so I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get there quick. <laughs> well, no, with, with, with the stuff that I'm taking, it, what it does is it makes it uh, so that you don't have to go all the time. You can go when you want to. You know, it's not like I, I don't, I used to, I never could sit through, a, it. I could never could sit through a whole movie in a theater without halfway through having to go to the bathroom. And once you get, take care of that large prostate, you're, you know, you're good to go. So mm -hmm. hey, is everybody enjoying themselves out there tonight? Uh, <laughs> Hi everybody. This is uh, Alex and his, his old codger pals talking about how we're all fucked. If you like it, send us a heart, will you? <laughs> or, or a smiley face. Medic they can alert. do that. They can do that. It's a form of applause on Facebook, you know, uh, where they can send us stuff. Let's see. You got a nice little people? heart. Yeah, a little, <laughs> yeah, a little heart. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> a little heart. That thing. Yeah, well, so what have we learned tonight? We've learned that uh, uh, never to uh, uh, over, overestimate a good fuck and never to underestimate a good <laughs> pee. You know, I mean, right? There we go. People are sending hearts our way now like crazy. Oh. Yes, and smiley faces <laughs> and uh, all kinds of things to say. They just love this. And, oh, there's even like one of these uh, ribbons, you know, like for a ribbon, ribbon thing. Right. Yeah. And uh, smiley faces. Oh, it's just, thank you so much. That's our form of applause here uh, doing Facebook Live. It's always sure. a nice way to do it, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, gee, I, you know, you've helped me get through the night. I don't feel that sick, you know. I, I, I've go. gotten through it okay. Who needs WebMD, well, man? You know, we what I, what, sometimes I don't feel well. I go, I, dude, I don't feel like doing a show. And then I come on, I talk to you guys for a couple of minutes, and we're off to the races, and I don't feel like, you know, the time's going slowly, and I thank you for that. Espe especially Rob, who probably feels better now than he did at the beginning of the show, because it's been a busy week for the guy. He's been yeah, he's, going to sleep now. He's going to go to sleep hey. now. Yeah, and he's in the same time zone I'm in. Anyway, uh, hey, let me uh, let me just start the theme here. There we go. Uh, 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 thank you so much, Patrick. You have regaled us with uh, with with your inner workings, as it were. Uh, Mike, thank you. Kevin, thank you. Rob, Ow. we appreciate it. Jeff, always like your medical opinion. John Rockwell, I was thinking of you today because I was looking through Wait, some of Anne's old photos that she's taken, which we inherited. Oh. Uh, and uh, um, 
you know, you don't want to look at somebody's entire uh, library because mm. sometimes they just shot shit that was shooting shit. It just was not, you know. <laughs> so you got to you got to wean glean through it. Little the, editing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, he knows who we're talking about because she worked with us as my producer over at uh, Midnight Blue. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that that's it. Thank you all. You know what I wish you would all do? It would be a nice thing is give a nice wave goodbye to the folks out there in television land. Uh, thank you. I hope we'll see you again tomorrow night. Bye. Okay. I'm Alex Bennett. That's our, uh, that's our uh, citizens panel for tonight, and I really appreciate it. That was fun, actually. I mean, you know, uh, especially for an old, uh, uh, what, what, uh, let me take care of this, okay. Uh, especially for an old hypochondriac like myself, you know, it's really nice to uh, be able to talk to other people who like to talk about their health. Uh, we're going to be here, uh, let's see here, next is uh, Jack and Amy and f- with the intersection. And following that will be Connections. I'm here again tomorrow night at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, Day- Eastern Standard Time. And I'll be here same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? All right? <laughs>